Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I painted at least four different types of black on this female vampire hunter from Copplestone Castings. Scruffy Crow! Ah! Alright, so I know for a lot of people, including me, uh, painting black can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. And when you've got a model like this, uh, where the reference photos look a lot like this, um, you start to wonder how am I going to paint that all black and still make it look good? So I'm going to show you a few of the ways that I paint black and hopefully we end up with a model that looks nice. Okay, so my first way of painting black is to not paint black and that's why I've done the inside of her cloak red. So that's not movie accurate, uh, but I think it fits with the aesthetic of the model, uh, fits the aesthetic of the film and it's going to look pretty cool and striking. Uh, I'm still going to do the outside black, but the inside I'm going to go for a rich red. So that would be my first tip would be if, yeah, if you're going to have to paint a lot of black, try and make some of it not black. Okay, so next up, the shoes and tr uh, trousers, top, outside of the jacket, hair are all going to be painted black. This is going to be a couple of thin coats of just standard watered down bad and black. Okay, so all that black is just drying now. Said so, uh, this has been two or three thin coats, just trying to make a nice, smooth, matte finish across the whole model. And already, I think this model's just sort of come alive. I mean, there's probably nothing wrong with just going, yeah, I mean, that's black, that works. But no, we're definitely gonna do some, do a few different highlights. A couple of different techniques we're gonna use is gonna use this uh, P3 Great Coat Gray. I use this quite a lot for highlighting black. I think it works quite nicely. The first two bits we're going to do is going to be a line highlight on the jacket and boots. Because those details are actually quite small, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to bring out the details while still giving it the impression of being black, which is sometimes fairly tricky on a model like this. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to pull this paint just on the edges of each detail and I'm aiming for something similar on the boots so there's a lot of straps and stuff here so I'm going to try and sort of do that sort of thing I've got the edge of the brush just running that along the edges just trying to show off any sharp edges that are there to get this to look good I will admit takes practice and it's something that I'm still working on I think I could still get a lot better I've seen some people who do line highlighting like this who are absolutely amazing at it and it absolutely can make a model come alive but I think for me the trick is not necessarily having every bit as neat as possible it's about the overall effect and I think that's what we've kind of achieved there and there's a couple of places like on a lapel here where I went a bit too thick with the black line and I am just going to try and paint back in inside the panel, just to try and neaten that up a little bit. This is also something I'm going to do right down the edge of the cloak. So I'm going to use the side of my brush, and I'm going to try and find the very sharpest edge here. I'm just going to run that down, and that should give me a highlight just on the edge of the pure grey. I'm also going to paint this line around the edges of the cuffs. So anywhere where there's a sharp line really. So I've got the lapels. Next up we're going back to the, the bigger brush and I'm busting out the wet palette. Though you don't really need a wet palette for this. Just somewhere where you can thin paints down. And we are going to thin this down quite a lot. And we kind of follow what we've been doing before. We're going to work up these folds on the edge of the paintbrush. Just line highlighting and letting it fade in to the top. And I'm going to do any other folds in the fabric. And we're going from the top, so we're imagining the lights coming down. And I'm just going to pick those up. But I'm not being as sort of precise and clean as I was trying to be on the boots. And because this paint's now sort of semi-transparent, 
you can kind of work with it. And you can kind of push it around a bit. So down the sides of these now, anywhere where I think the light might hit, I'm just sort of smearing some of this very watered down paint on there. And I can do the same with the black. Got the black there. And I can make sure, I can pull that up next to where I've been doing the grey. We have a nice semi-transparent black here. And we can, we don't want any particular harsh lines on this bit to be nice and smooth. So I'm basically just working with the two wet paints, both wet at the same time. Just sort of, you can even have a mixture of the two. And I find this kind of painting quite relaxing actually. As long as you keep everything nice and thin, you shouldn't have too much problem with like paint build up or anything. And you can really just spend ages just getting this exactly how you want it. And that's the kind of what we're going for, these nice, fades up to the solid black between our shoulders and in the nooks and the crannies there. So yeah, I'm thinking pretty happy with that for now. I can always revisit it, see if I enjoy the wet palette. The next area we're going to look at is going to be our hair. Now it's very rare that people have actually got black hair. And you can highlight it if you're going to go for black hair, just with this, and you just use a little dry brush. Uh, what I'm actually going to use is going to be Rhinoxide. This is the, the darkest brown I've got. I'm actually running out. Uh, I can actually see light through the bottom of this paint pot. I think I've got a spare though. Panic over. I do indeed have a fresh bottle of the stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting my brush all loaded up and I am going to do this as pretty much a dry brush so that I'm going to get most of that back off. As I said, I'm going to do this as a dry brush. So I'm going to run this uh, across way. So as the hair comes down, I'm going to go that way. Just try and catch the ends of the hairs. Just to try and give it the slightest bit of contrast. But without really changing the colour too much. Now it might be because of the amount of black on this model. But I'm not entirely happy with the way that's working with the rest of the figure actually. Um, but I'll let it dry and let it settle down a little bit and I'll, I might revisit that. But yep, yeah, that's probably one of the better ways of doing black hair, because as I said, hair is very rarely completely black. So next up, I'm gonna look at these guns. For these, I'm gonna take my darkest silver and a disposable, but still quite fine brush. Now for painting black metal, there's two ways that I do it. One is this, where we start with the, the metal uh, the way, the other way is where I would I would paint it black, and then I would just very carefully either either dry brush or line highlight the model again in this dark silver. Okay, with the guns dry, I'm going to take another paint in my arsenal that I enjoy, which is this uh, contrast berserk and grey. I don't use the contrast paints a lot, uh, but I do get a lot of use out of this particular one, uh, and you'll see why I think. So we've got our overly shiny guns, and actually we want them to look black. And this kind of works the same as sort of null oil, except way more so. And rather than really using this like a wash, I'm actually more like using it like a like a thick coat of paint. It doesn't really run and move like a wash. but it will still pull into all our little crevices and pick out these details without any work from us. Cool, and now they are significantly blacker. And if I want them even blacker, I can wait till this layer dries and go back in and do that again. So while that's all drying, I'm gonna do my last and cheatiest method of highlighting things that are painted black. And that is using hard coat or any other gloss varnish so we can get a weird glob of the stuff on my brush and we're very carefully only going to get this on our trousers and the thicker layer we get here the, the glossier it'll be but I don't want it too thick however it does sort of self-level to a certain extent 
and hide your brush strokes so it's not the end of the world if you go on a little bit thick but already you can see that's the what we're going for and hopefully that will dry very similar to that uh, and you can tell the difference between the uh, the wet look trousers and her just otherwise black boots I still think without making the boots look like they've been painted grey So I'm going to leave all these bits and pieces to dry fully and I'll revisit this in a few hours. Okay, so I've let everything sort of settle down and actually I'm happy with the hair. It just gives it that off black uh, that we were looking for. The shiny trousers are dry now and are still nice and shiny and they, they do look kind of movie accurate. I've given a bit of a, a lighter highlight on the red on the underside of the cloak. Uh, once again, very thin down uh, and really not much, so most of the original is under there. So it's only one highlight, but I think it's quite effective. So the back of the cloak, all the highlights have sort of settled down and blended in, I think, as they've dried. And I'm happy with the way that's come out. You can barely see them when the light's reflecting off them, which suggests to me that I got them in all the right places. Uh, and I've given a second coat of the contrast on the guns. So they are very almost black, but still metallic. Only a couple of things left to do now. So this is my clear bases that you'd have seen. So there she is all pinned onto one of the bases and I've managed to use a small enough amount of glue to avoid fogging this time. Um, and you won't be able to see that pin when she's on the table. I think that's come out really nicely. I'm really happy with the, uh, the look on this. And all the different types of black I think work. You can tell the difference between her boots and her trousers, her hair and her jacket, her guns. And she looks badass. And I can't wait to uh, hopefully use her in a game of Stargrave. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.